All right, folks. Hi. Welcome to the Historical Fencing Guild's uh, weekly live stream. I'm Nick Tockert, and today we're going to be talking about uh, dual wielding rapiers. We're going to be working out of my book and part of what sponsors this channel, The Simple Sword. This was made because some people, I believe that entering into sword fighting, hello everyone, awesome, awesome, glad to see folks coming in. Hi Steph, hi, I know I shared this to a lot more people than usual, I know people are interested in the sword fighting and they've they wanted to talk more about it, people keep telling me they always miss my show, so I'm not only am I starting it about eight minutes early for the good folks who show up and dropping my book, hi, awesome, now, you guys, Feel free to interrupt what I'm doing. I will try to keep up on the comments. I will, you'll see me uh, flitting back and forth between uh, the YouTube, uh, Facebook Messenger because some people just don't have YouTube accounts that they know how to comment on. So I find having both going helps. Now, to the people who are using the book, because as we we start with this, eyes work first out of the book. We talk about the main subject. That way, if nobody shows up, I've got something going on. And today, today's a great topic because we're going to be talking about rapiers, which everyone knows are my favorite weapon in the world. Mm, yeah, yeah, rapiers. The whole family of things make me happy. And we're going to be working. I'm sorry, my little support desk just decided to take off halfway across the room. No, that's not an audio mic. That's for my other channel when I'm doing art stuff. But for the people who are following along, we are on page. Should be 63, if I remember right. 63, we're going to be talking about Case of Rapiers. Case of Rapiers, or Florentine if you're a heavy fighter, is using two swords of roughly equal length to be able to fight uh, effectively, either as a means of overwhelming a single opponent or as a means of engaging multiple opponents at the same time in a melee situation. Now, for a new fighter especially, or somebody who is not terribly trained, seeing two swords can be very, very intimidating, especially when you only have one. But, and we're going to get into that, I need, I need to do a little bit of up-armoring because I have some policies. Those of you who don't know, because this is always geared towards the people who don't know, th you know, sword fighting things. If you're handling steel, that means live steel. If you're handling uh, heavy rapiers, like what I'm going to be pulling from behind the camera tonight, you really, as a bare minimum of courtesy, should be, there goes the book getting closed again, which I left open, so I wouldn't have to do this. <laughs> I'm excited. I've got a big turnout tonight already. And uh, a lot of the people who have been invited are authors. And I've had comments, you know, that they're writing fight scenes. So if you're having problems with the fight scene, um, feel free to fire off your, your questions. I would love to be able to help authors get better because if you write better fight scenes, more realistic fight scenes, you're, go you're going to make people who have more realistic ideas getting into it. And I'm not talking the realm of magic and superpowers, although that still applies. But I am talking about how swords work, what they do, and what they don't. So um, tonight's beverage is my famous Galacticino, a uh, semi-secret recipe. Uh, for those who – oh, let's see. We got something coming in. Okay. Got a few people checking it out, and they most people know that it's it's starting in five minutes. Yes, I started a little early because we had people coming in, and I don't want anybody bored. I will keep blabbing on and on as needed to fill dead space because that's what we do on YouTube. But when we're talking rapiers, and we're talking about the handling of a rapier. Now, this is my old longtime friends, fencers, and leftovers from the society. You'll notice this wiggle. In a video a while ago, I helped Jim fix his sword, and I said, I'll fix mine. I may just do a restoration video on how to how to uh, bring back a bit of a weapon that's been slightly neglected. And this hasn't been neglected, per se. It's actually been used lovingly, so it's got a little bit of looseness. 
Now you want to know the secret recipe. Um, hmm. You know what? I might just throw... I've been trying to find a way to give uh, credit to my patrons because this is all possible because of my patrons. The people who know, know I do not charge my students when they they come to my home. I don't charge them for education. I usually provide training gear, and I don't even have tax breaks or anything. I just do this as a way of helping people. So, uh, let me see. Oh. Any, any commentary from the peanut? Okay, th that wasn't related to this. So if you want to know, the, I might just throw the Galacticino recipe up on uh, my Patreon for my patrons. I might just do that because that then I won't feel bad. But I don't believe in charging people for my sword play. So I have to find something to throw on the Patreon that is beyond the message of helping people. So it's a real challenge. But... But we're getting, let's see, ah, excellent, excellent, excellent. But uh, that was Amy Hale of Hale's Angels messaging me. So I hope everybody can kind of tinker on in. This is my personal rapier. If I had to pick up a single sword to this day to defend myself, I would want something along these lines. Now, I have art in my home because of copyright and YouTube issues. I have to have the Tarp of Doom. I might upgrade it with something better, but really, it hits the uh, help me on poor motif I do so love. This is a 34-inch blade, which, as you will see, if you were to look in the front of the book, is literally perfect proportions for me. That means I can draw this from a, a you know standard sheath with no issue. I can use this lightly and quickly, and uh, it doesn't drag on the low lines. One thing people will always try to get you to do, thank you for the like, whoever threw the like, and please, 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 like, share, subscribe. I can't hammer that enough because that's what lets YouTube uh, work with me. Ooh, I just got a message. I'm trying to work out a deal on... Okay. I, I'm trying to work out a deal with uh, Triplet Competition Arms to get uh, seconds so that one guild practice starts up as we transition in part over to uh, more steel weapons, which people keep requesting. I can make sure we can do it safely. That's why I need the Patreon, because I can't afford to do this. So that's why I ask. Thank you for the second one. Anyway. We'll break down the parts of a rapier, why this is my primary, and what my secondary looks like before we get into the techniques. I like this because it shows everything, okay? A blade, the blade on a rapier has three parts, okay? The foible, bleh, the foible, the mezzoforte, and the forte. Forte is strong, mezzoforte is medium strong, foible is weak. That's the music stuff that should all sound familiar. Now, you need to know, if you're using a rapier, or any light sword especially, the forte as the bottom half and the foible as the top half. Why? The strength involved has to do with leverage. So what you want to do is, whenever possible, block with the forte, because that's going to give you the strongest block, and attack with the foible, because that gives you the most reach, it's the most effective. It's simple logic. Now, this sword is rather ornate. Uh, it started out life something I purchased from a man by, by the name of Gil Gilberto Benitez, or Benny the Mad Arab of Benny's Bazaar of the Bazaar back, oh, go, we're not going to talk, in the early aughts. Uh, this is a cup hilt right here, very similar to the Spanish style. However, it has a, a distinctive triple knuck knuckle duster, this cross piece is made of brass. It was made for me by uh, John Miner. And the original was actually uh, cold steel, uh, mild steel, I'm sorry, in quarter inch. It was very, very heavy. So this is a little lighter. This is an old, uh, probably an old triplet pommel that came off of a battered old. You will see this sword has had 20 some odd years of uh, use pretty much on it after whoever had it before me. So 
this is one of the last oval Schlagers. So that means the cross section is oval. It's not wide. It's rather narrow. It's a little stiffer, but this is a, my baby. And you're seeing it. It's in kind of sad shape. The tape has been beaten up from lots of practice uh, as recently as the Friday the 13th before everything went to heck. And uh, it, it was enthusiastic, so, you know, it's taken some care. I will do a video. Now, when I talk case, I usually use in my offhand, and I have them switched because I'm trying to reach things. This is my offhand sword. It's probably my second favorite fencing sword. Very, very different. And I want to point out what makes it different. First off, you'll notice it is marginally shorter. This is a 30-inch blade. This is a great length for concussive style fighting. I also recommend a slightly shorter blade if you are ever going to engage indoors or you're riding an adventurer. A lot of people like to give their adventurers long swords. Great two-handed, it's powerful. Try swinging them in a forest. I actually did a video, if you go back, on why a, a two-handed sword is not the best idea for an adventurer. And I, it was a response to somebody that worked real well. This has a saber guard, and it was painted black, and the paint needs to be redone. So this might, I might just do a refurbish. I actually, I didn't like the, the wrap because it was fr uh, frayed, so I just pulled it off and lightly stained it. This is much lighter, especially with the heavier pommel. The heavier the pommel, the more it pulls the weight of the sword, whoop, point of balance, closer to the hand. Now, if you're looking for a concussive sword, you want a sword with the point of balance right about here, because that's the sweet spot. That's where, you know, you want a, an, an edge farther out, the harder it's going to chop, but the less reactive it's going to be. This thing just dances. I absolutely adore it for that. My only uh, dislike is that it doesn't have a keyhole grip. So, we have this. I like selecting as a, uh, when you're picking your gear, if you're fighting two-handed, you'll notice this has quillions. There's a lot of cross. Right. This is simple. Why? Because as I'm switching stances, okay, and it's hard to do with the limits of where I am. Hi, Nick, says uh, Tiger Lucky Charms. You've got a call sign that I don't know who you are, but I'm going to say hey to you anyway. Um, if you can reveal your identity, Tiger Lucky Charms, I'll be able to give you a more personalized response. And sometimes it takes me a minute because I get going. All right. Now, that means these weapons aren't going to clash on the back end. The difference in length, I'm actually going to push my tarp back. I know where it is. Boop. Oh, hi, Danielle. Okay. This... I've balanced out the ends so you can see there's about a four inch difference. That means as I'm parrying, when I'm engaging both weapons, I can sort of juggle the tips. These aren't going, when you have two weapons that are uh, the same length, which you can have, it's much more likely to tangle as you're switching stances, as you're fighting, and as you're. Uh, engaging. Now, it is rather warm right now in my study because I have to close everything off to, keep, to limit these background noises. So to prevent sweating, I'm going to switch to this. This is my custom small sword, which is very, very close to, the, to my uh, backup weapon. And I, I'm going to use this for a lot of the discussion simply because it is lighter and it's there. Uh, when you are talking to dual wielding, so maybe I should have two swords. If only I had another weapon handy. Oh, wait, it's me. I do. And as always, this is the uh, Purple Heart Armory Italian Tactical Side Sword Trainer. I helped design it. I am very proud of this weapon. It's one of the best on the market if you don't, don't mind nearly zero flex. Runs in the department of uh, 50 bucks. 
If I had the money, I'd probably buy 12 of these and just have them out for my fighters. I, I designed this. It does what I, what I want it to do. I have two of them. One just has a pommel. But you've got two swords. Boom. Now, as you can see, once again, even here, my quillions are, I'm not doing two heavy quillion swords. This has enough to give me the keyhole and let me do some shady grip tricks. And these are plastic, so I can get away without ha the uh, the bulky gloves. But uh, whew, with these, you can do a lot of things. Now, when you're fighting with one sword, and we have to talk about this because it's the key both of fighting the, this style and defeating it, you have a center line. And I'm going to stand up a bit that runs from your eyes straight down through to where your legs meet, a.k.a. your crotch. I'm sorry if that offends anybody. It's not meant to. If you take that, you go to your natural waist, not your belt line, where you actually pivot. And I'm a chunky monkey, so you got to get used to that. But you can make a uh, – you can break into four quadrants. And what we've got high outside. I'm in what's considered offensive stance. This, the, the blade is between the meat, okay? High outside, low inside, and I'm trying to keep it on this goofy camera. High inside, low outside. These are the areas you have to defend. You have four, four quadrants. Now, like I said, there's a center line. When you are fighting single, you always parry. If a shot comes in, you always parry from, so I'm going to grab just this cane for a second, and I'm going to set it there. If a shot is coming here, somebody's trying to stab me, I'm going to parry the shortest travel distance. That means, here, let me park it there so it's not blocking the camera entirely. That means if somebody's trying to stab me in this arm, I don't want to parry here, okay? I, if I can avoid not having to parry and have it cross all the way, I will. I want to parry it, excuse me, here, to parry it out, away from the center line. If it's coming here, I want to cross because I always want, remember, this is headed toward me. This is a line that will be traveling in an arc. It's a little bit of geometry. This is going, you want minimum effort to move your sword offline. Now, I train people to fight and my book is trained to fight, and my philosophy of combat is one of applied sloth. That being, if it's not efficient, you, uh, whoop, goofy hand is acting up again. You don't want to do it. If it's, uh, thank you for the likes, guys, they, and thank you for the watching. If, if, if a style is uh, very flamboyant, you're wasting a lot of energy. So I always try to tell my students, if you're fighting, fight. If you're not fighting, don't. Now, Nick, you're talking about two weapons. You're prattling on about one weapon. Well, there's a reason for that. Oh, hello, Glenn. Glad to see you here as me. Now, um, what I'm going to do, I realize, I'm going to switch to double dagger so that I can demonstrate in range without having to worry about swinging and hitting things. It's almost like having a weapon too long for your setting causes entanglement issues. Now, you'll see me, and I default. There's almost a little crossover. Now, both of these are guarding my high line. So if I stand up, and you see this, or maybe this, see this stance a lot. What's not guarded? Well, here, except I can do that. It's protected. I'm using this in a very windshield wiper approach. It's simple. It's minimalist. Bam. Now, you'll notice a lot of times when you're fighting rapier, there's a dual wielding. There's this idea that you have to do two things at once. People don't multitask well. What you often do is you park one hand, and this is going to be my blocking hand right now. I'm in defensive and blocking. This is my sucker punch. So, bam. What What is this? Well, and once again, I get to do the three, the amazing three-arm neck. We're going to try this square guy. 
Okay. Congratulations, camera. You are stabbing me. This is a POV cam without aim, or you're trying to stab me in the neck. What I'm going to do is one, bring my sword up. Aha, I love these things. I'm going to knock this offline. There we go. And I'm going to come in and stab at the arm. Very simple. It's going to be one motion. It's hard to balance your opponent's sword to get what you want, but one motion, parry and stab. Parry and stab. Now, sometimes you have to block multiple shots, and you can do that with simple muscle memory. So high crop, double cross high, double cross low, etc. It becomes much less apparent the longer the weapon. How do you fight as a single fight fencer against a double fencer? That's a great place to be. And I'm going to get the book, and I'm going to show pictures and talk about this more and kind of Go back over the stream of thought. Thank you for yet another like, folks. And be sure to share this. A lot of people get complicated, uh, highfalutin nonsense as how to make a sword go. And it really isn't need. It doesn't need to be that way. It should be fun. Let me just pull this chunk camera down a little bit. There we go. Okay. But it can be covered both the high lines. So that means if somebody's chopping here, this can come up and get it. Okay? Keep it simple. How do you defeat that? Two basic approaches. One, and I will mention this, uh, thank you. I've got five people watching. I've got five likes. I've got equilibrium. That's a beautiful thing to see as a YouTuber. Now, awesome six. Don't be afraid to hit the like button. If you're fighting somebody, two things. Like I said, there will be usually when somebody is fighting with two, two weapons. One of them will be more heavily armored. One of them is obviously lighter. That's a hint. That most of the time means if I'm in that, even without worrying about stance, which of these two weapons am I going to attack with and which one am I more likely to defend with? You know, I'll give you a couple seconds. Do, 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 do. Copyright. Anyway. <laughs> Obviously, the guard. I'm going to be using this as a more defensive. I now know what this guy is doing. This is going here. Pop. This is the mighty hand of Tomberry. This is the dagger. This is the lantern for Final Fantasy front. Especially if you see a reverse. A reverse grip guy is going to either use a cross defense or have to close in much harder to get that weapon to work. So that's telling you who's doing what. Now, if you are fighting this, you know that this hand's going to be the counter strike. So you you want to do enough of a fate, which is a fake out. You want to throw a shot that they block. That's going to either open up. That's going to open them up a little bit. And you have two options. You can either try for the opening, knowing that they're coming in hopefully with a guard, or you can wait that half beat, wait for them to do this, and then I don't know how many... Every person I convinced to be a shady, underhanded arm sniper, I've done one little step to make the fencing community a better place. Is that, Does that mean I hate it? Absolutely, because the foil purists who want the body shots, this won't work. But you also don't see a lot of dual-wielding foils in the round fought with those conventions. So I can get away with it. Awesome! Seven viewers, seven likes. Guys, this is like Christmas for me. And uh, again, if you, if, I, if you have questions, comments, anything you want to talk about, throw that on there. But we've talked about you want to target this. You might be able to get this part. If you could get them to overextend their defense, Merry Christmas. Hey, you know what? I'm a simple man. I don't ask for a lot. I just want a, the opportunity to help people and have fun doing it. And, you know, if I get enough money to afford the gear to armor you guys up when you come over or, you know, so I can you know, buy things to test it so I can tell you if it's any good, I'm winning. I'm winning hard, you know. The simple sword. 
is it has been a, a, a work of love and I'm 20 years into the system. I am still working on the sequel. I just got to wait, delay it a bit because I'm working on uh, an RPG for uh, hybrids over at Starcross Comics. The, the title's uh, led by a man, man named uh, Luke Stone. Amazing gentleman. Totally off topic. Back on. Daggers. Yay! Okay. So, if somebody's dagger fighting, if somebody's sword fighting, because all these are short swords, and by some people's definition, this annoys how short I am, if the weapon is as long as your arm, it's a sword. This still could count as a sword for me. Anyhow. Okay. Oh, these are by Cold Steel. You can get them for less than 15 bucks. Great weapons. Some of my all-time favorites. This is a custom rig I did. Note, note the uh, electrical thing. Anyway. The other thing, and this is... When I fight, I'm here. I'm crossed over a lot because... Remember I told you there's this guy has four quadrants. Pop, pop, pop. Well, if I put a sword in this hand, they have four quadrants. Pop, pop, pop. And you're not seeing them. Where does a dagger become a short sword? That is a great question, Glenn. Now, there are some people who try to use hard numbers. They try to say, a, you know, a specific length, often around a foot. I think that's poppycock. And why? Because I have fought with people who are shoulder high on me, and I have fought against guys who were seven feet tall. What the <laughs> what the damage dice changes? Nicely done. The literary mercenary, by the way, is is Neil Litherland, and he wrote one of my favorite books of all time, uh, Crier's Knife by him. Um, you really should look that up too. I will plug your stuff. It's a it's a habit I got in for Brian K. Morris, but uh, yeah, I've been doing that since before then. Race Rising Tide lifts all boats, but. Hi, Ren. Oh, my night just got better. I am graced by the presence of my, my Contessa. You know if you have any questions, comments, or anything more than the lovely poppycock you just threw up, let me know. Okay. I told you. This one has four. One, two, one, two. Uh, too many pretty people come in and I get distracted. One, two, three, four. Okay. And this one. When they overlap, you get six. Because you have... Out, high outside, low outside, high inside, low inside. And boy, do we get some gun kind of vibes off of that thought. Oh, thanks. I love you too, Steve. You know that right here. And I will get back to the dagger thing because I got distracted. Weapons should be proportional. That means... What is a, this is nearly a sword for me. If this were that much longer, I would have literally bought 12 of them. And I would be teaching people these as my primary short sword. I'm not even kidding. I need about six more inches off of this. So uh, about a 22, 24 inch blade. That puts it about 30, 30 inches overall, minimum sword for what I consider a sword. Your weapon must always hit your proportions. Earlier in the video, I brought up my favorite rapier. Give me just a second because to switch weapons, I when I'm going for steel, always, always, always. You know, if you're going to have love, wear the glove, folks. And I know that's a horrible tongue-in-cheek thing to say. But, okay, personal rapier. Favorite weapon ever. I would love something of this proportion in live steel. Same style and balance. That would be my... If I were went through the portal, you know, weapon of choice. This goes from my outstretched fingers to my center line. This is a perfect fit sword for me. I want nothing longer than this usually, and nothing shorter. Whoops, as a sword than about this. This is a, this could go here, so I could go about a twenty-four inch blade. But I, I'm a bit of a rapier guy. I like thrusty based weapons, so I like the capacity 
to have that extra reach. That being said, in Steve's hand, Steve Clawson, in John Miner's hand, that's a dagger. That's barely as long as his forearm. It's ridiculous. Because some of the people I fought with back in the day, one moment, mm, Galacticino. It tastes just like a, a to, uh, Toblerone. Yes, yes. I've actually seen that bayonet, and I've recommended there's a German pattern bayonet that were that I sent you a picture of. It's rather expensive, but I'm sure somebody makes a knockoff. Or, you know, you acquire it, or we make a trainer off of the measurements. That would be perfect for you, Steph. Steph is essentially a goblin. Love her dearly. This is not a bash. Uh, but Stephanie is is small. She's aggressive. Okay, hack and slash. If you like hack and slash and you're running one-handed, especially since I know Glenn, I've seen him, that is, this is going to be much more. You're going to like a, a military straight straight rig. This is actually a, pretty much evolved from a lot of uh, uh, early mil uh, military patterns. This style of saber is actually one of the longest, if this were a single edge instead of a double edge, one of the most long-issued weapons of a sword variety in the world. It, it was popular. They, they were issued technically the Marine Corps saber pretty much fits this pattern. It just has a minimalist guard to this day. That, it may be ceremonial, but remember, the Marines are funny about their knives, and they're funny about swords and bayonets they remember their roots and if they're still using a weapon design after a couple hundred years of being you know very very bad mofos there's a reason they work they're also simple and easy yes he has a lot more than one bayonet and yes i am a small angry goblin you fly that flag proudly stephanie the other thing you should probably, you know, she's very handy with a, a tomahawk, light axes. So these these are weapons where sometimes people get caught up in the mythos of a sword, the spirit of the sword. Um, there is an implied belief that a, a katana has certain uh, elements of honor simply expected by it in... Uh, Western and certainly in the Eastern cultures, you know, in Japanese cultures, this is a there is a spirit to the weapon. Um, in Western cultures, things like long swords, great swords, not only speak of the obvious phallic virility of the wielder, but they also have a mythos of the one man army thing. And those are weapons of war and not defense. There is a difference. Laughs in Ulfbert. Yes. Now, there are differences in steel. Crucible steel is better than, than uh, Japanese folded Damascus. Japanese folded Damascus, which it is technically Damascus, it gets complicated, but simple understanding of terms, was produced because the steel they had was such junk that they had to find a way to harden it and purify it. Hence the many, many foldings, which tends to make it brittle, which actually affects both the style and application of a, a period-formed katana. Now, the, you can make katanas, and they obviously do have superior steel. You can get diff, you know, a much sturdier product, but the slashing style of the katana is, very, is as much about not breaking the weapon as it is using it properly, in my humble and semi-studied opinion. Feel free to disagree with me. That is always welcome, as long as it's done civilly. Um, so, you know, let me, let me, on the topic of, of swords, this, this is my personal cutlass as a 24-inch blade. I have a trainer. You guys have seen me fight because I usually hand mine to Jim because his he has a weapon that matches it almost exactly this length that I have because I train with this weapon. It was given to me again by John Minor. But 
he was laughing because not only is this to him a dagger, quite literally, it's only that much about longer than his forearm, but his fist is seven of my fingers wide. So if he when he tries to grab this, he either has three of his fingers crunched up or literally two fingers in and two out to hold it. It's a delightful little thing. So keep your weapons proportionately. How the hell didn't his hand fit? It's that, it's... Ah, yeah, never mind, yes. There are a great many uh, things that existed in legend, in legend, and Glenn is a wonderful historian of the obscure and, um, shall we say, esoteric, and that is met with the highest of praise. And that'd be like, you know what would be great? Some Woot Steel with an Ori Halcom Guard. But we have to make do with what we have here in current times. However, should you on any of your expedition studies or things come across with, um, upgraded weaponry, feel free to make donations to your favorite uh, Swordmaster to the Underprivilege. Mm. In the words of Brian K. Mer Morris, uh, Kefefe. But... We've really gotten off topic, and that's okay. I like that. That means I'm getting a lot of feedback. That means we're working back and forth. I'm going to pull my book so we can talk a little bit just to show what I was talking about. Now, yes, one would hope my angel sword has come. Steve Glossom. I have seen angel swords works. I've seen uh, sabersmiths works, thanks to you, a few others. I would love to go down to their booth and see if they have anything in Gnomish Hobbit instead of uh, in Uber Viking, because you do have some pretty things, but it would be like fencing with a soup can for me. Oh, their Woot Steel Collection. I forgot to have it. Glenn, contact Steve. He will like put you in with Angel Sword. They've done things with uh, metallurgy in weapons that are both heinously well-researched, and um, borderline sorcery. The, uh, <laughs> they, have, they have a couple styles of uh, steel that Steve has shown me that are somehow almost aluminum light while having all the strength and uh, tensile, the spring of stone, of spring steel. Wonderful stuff. If they want to donate something to me again, throw it my way. Pardon me, I'm feeling a bit mercenary tonight. But, okay. Simple Sword. And I plug this in part because you can get this for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. I keep renewing it while this uh, coronavirus thing is, is dooming everybody. I don't think I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, but I also am not monetized. I don't get anything for this other than helping people. But we're going to talk about that. If you don't stagger your blades, if you let them drift apart, your middle road opens up and you deserve to die. If you plane, oh, I didn't mention planing your weapons. I mentioned a little bit about getting tangled, but I didn't mention planing. Planing, planing, planing. Woohoo! Fun. Okay, what is playing website? Okay, good, good, good. You guys are talking. Um, they are very, very close. Uh, Angel Sword. Uh, what? Steve, throw Angel Sword's website up if if you have it handy. And if not, and they don't have one, buy all that is holy. They should. Now, mind you, that stuff is in a price range that is several magnitudes larger than anything I can. Uh look into and uh yeah th that's that's amazing but uh sorry planning your sword i you know what i'm not i'm gonna use these guys i'm gonna use these guys because i don't want to throw the gloves off if you are holding your swords like this so from the side flat that's called planing your swords this is bad 
This is a horrible thing to do. Now, if you're you're staggered, you're almost okay, but you're still planing them. What that means is they're making a flat surface. Why is that a problem? This is a problem. Planing your swords is a problem because somebody with one weapon can come up under. I understand they'd be wider apart, but I'm I'm one man doing you know three handed work again. And you can knock both blades offline. So if you have two weapons or a shield or a stick and a weapon, you can easily sweep both swords offline where they're not doing any good and then gut them like the metaphorical fish. Don't plane your swords. That's also a great way if you need to kill somebody in a book, That's a, you know, the, the, have them dart in, catch the swords, push them offline, gut. Beautiful. And please, please, if you're riding sword fights, don't be afraid to run some people through. It the the I've made the opening and I've stopped for dramatic effect. Okie dokie, awesome. Uh, and I know your response, Steph's responding to the whole uh, angel sword thing, but okay, I know she responds okie dokie to uh, running people through as well. So wow, this is going great. Yeah, okay. You're if you're fighting somebody, there are always options. If you can pull off a leg, if you can stab somebody in the leg and just run away, run away. Always train like melee. And I want to get into something. I've had some commentary in the last few weeks, as I've been doing this. Heck yeah, that I teach a very, very simple style. That looks smooth. But uh, welcome to the wonderful world of live TV. I teach a very simple style. If I tell somebody, if somebody has a knife, if I have to take this knife and I were to defend myself, a thrust is going to look the same body mechanics as whoop, a dagger thrust. Optimistically cynical, I slept with my... I have absolutely no idea how you got here, optimistically cynical, or what your reference to your um, apparently hazardous sex life is. But uh, optimistically cynical says, I slept with my audiologist and got AIDS. Oh, wait, hearing AIDS. I think that's a pun. And if that is a pun, you are you are indeed in the right place. And guys, if you're using a, a YouTube, not yes, if you're using a, a YouTube uh, handle, please, 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 give me some indication who you are. There's no such thing as a bad pun. It just took me a second because yo, know, I'm on the wonderful world of YouTube, and if you guys saw some of the stuff that gets DM'd to me. Mm. Anyway, so now I, I, I've kind of talked about that. I, I've gotten bounced around a lot, which is good. If my video is crumbling because the commentary is throwing me off, you guys are doing your job and enjoying yourselves. Um, so does anyone have a question before I pick the next topic to go off on? And I'll give it a couple minutes while I figure out what topic I'm going off on. Uh, if you want to know more about fighting people with two rapiers, my book is always available. Uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Talker. This is their whoop, Big Stumpy Robots is there. Um, a few other really great things. The novels in the Big Stumpy Robots universe, it's all there for you. For your enjoyment, dirt cheap because I—that's—that's that's how I believe people should be. I'm not. I'd rather make a lot of people happy than make myself rich. That being said, anything that helps can. And we're down to four four people, so that comment must have ran a lot of you off. Okay. Oh, you know what? A neat example. You were talking about swords and daggers. This, <laughs> this is the, 
the only uh, main gouge I had seen in years that was of a price range my poor self could afford. It shocked. I'll never forget the look of Jim's face because I just laid the money down. I didn't even really haggle. He's like, I don't know if it's worth that. It was to me at the time. This is my main gouge. It's a strange main gouge in that it's uh, only theoretically edged. Theoretically. On one side. I did actually, like, this has the weirdest cross section. I don't know if I can get to show. See the triangular cross section? It really is set up to be like a sword like this, but it's a main gouge, so you should be wielding it like this. And it's like, Nick, why are you handling that without gloves? Well, you see this buildup? That is not rust. This thing is literally wrapped in wax, and I have to clean it all off. So this is on my to-do rapier list. Uh, repair, not rapier list. So I'll put that on. on. This is just my lovely semi-improvised uh, frog. This is just a nice little rig. But look at the length. Steve's laughing at me again. I can hear it. This is technically just about the minimum where this could be considered a sword for me. I think this is a 20-inch blade. Let me... Well, I can check real easy. Let me get a 17. Oh, yeah. It's... A, oh, no. It's a 17. That's why I like this so much. This is the exact length as my old parry dagger. Steve, you would never. You would in a heartbeat, okay? And we both know it. And dang it, that's part of why I love you. And yes, I just randomly pull weapons out of nowhere. Oh, there went the tape on the tip of that. Well, I need to redo that. Whoop. Okay. So, apparently I'm going to be doing a video doing a whole night where I sit and I redo the tape on my weapons and I polish and sand. If that's something you guys would like to see on either as a video or as a chatting live stream while I work on it, get in the hole. Well, you need to, it was a little big. So I had, had trouble fitting there, uh, my dear Contessa. So uh, I had to be gentle. I try to be gentle. But uh, I also don't do a lot of behind-the-back holstering. Uh, put that back where it was. Yes, bugging me in the middle of the night would probably be the second dumbest thing somebody could do. I don't have handy enough uh, ballistic solutions for uh, that to be the most. I mean, I think Steve would be the worst person to bug in the middle of the night. But yeah, pretty much I am rather comfortable in my office. Ah, uh, let's see. No, it hasn't gotten dark yet, so we're still going doing good. Let's see. Oh, wow, we're 40. We're nearly an hour in. We're doing real well, folks. Uh, optimistically cynical, can you tell me who, if you're still around and who you may be? Because I'm curious. Uh, other than that, please like, share, subscribe, and deep dive these videos. I've got years of videos on here of people like Jim. Oh, yes. Every, yes, every aspect of dealing with swords is a good thing for videos. Okay, you, you guys would like so, me to set up a, um, a repair video. That'll be a little challenging because right now YouTube is only letting me live stream through an actual PC. It won't like let me do it through a mobile device for reasons. But... I will make arrangements, and what I'll have to do is set up a workspace here, and we'll see about uh, doing that. Because I I believe basic maintenance and modifications. I'm thinking of repainting this guard. This is off topic a little bit, and it'll be a while before I can. But I, should I go basic black with this, or would you guys like me to, to do something more um, artistic? I have some options. I can make this pretty. So, you know, fill that in, too. I'm just morbidly curious. I don't know if I'll do it, but, you know, I am susceptible to the suggestions of my viewers and completely in the service of my patrons. Thank all three of you. Uh, that being the lovely Ren Contessa, the amazing Steve 
Augusto, I have to say his name properly for uh, copyright reasons, and, uh, oh, artistic. Well, you are the one who can, can manipulate me into most anything. Uh, and uh, the mysterious Nemo Smith, who's been kind enough to look after me for quite some time, and yet I know next to nothing about him or her, and that makes my universe just a little more interesting. Good evening, Rex Hood! Rex Hood is one of the finest fencers that I've had the pleasure of uh, knowing. It, and uh, the rec prerequisite uh, um, strip fencer. The, our, our, he is our sort of authority on all things collegiate fencing. At one point, I think he got a B ranking in, in, uh, nationally. Amazing man. Came back from a lot, and I'm incredibly proud. I'm proud to know him, and I'm proud of what he does. You're going to love what's coming up, Rex, because I am plotting some things that you will deem a bit safer. Still going to have a Nick Flair. A and F You made A and Foil? <laughs> Heck yeah! Mm. Devastating man with a foil. Devastating. One of my all-time favorites, and one of my favorite uh, Salat guys, too. That's, that's fun. You, this is how I can trigger a couple of my slot guys. Real easy. The Hello Grabbit. It's still here. Still in reach. The goofiest trainer ever. Anyway. So, yeah, guys. Any comments, any questions, anything you like. I'm doing this every week on Fridays because I can't host for uh, the live guild because I don't want anybody to die. Is that is the one ugly. Yes, it is. That is, this is ridiculous. And you know what? I, I've had few trainers I've had more fun with. How much to blow that thing up? Oh, God. You, you'd you want to blow, look. Oh, that's great. Rex and Steve agree on something. You guys want to kill the Hello Karambit? I don't know. I'm afraid to throw a monetary number because I bet you'd, you'd do it. It's sort of an, a, an unholy relic. I might, I might be persuaded to frame it and put it up somewhere as a decoration so no one can handle it, but, like, the art in me is really unlikely to have it. <laughs> that being said, um, if we get people back out, I might use this as a pattern, not obviously this tape, to make a bunch of uh, play-safe karambits. I was watching some great videos on knife work, and it's funny because a lot of my studies come from people with military backgrounds. And a lot of the historical stuff I've compared with modern stuff as part of developing what I call the 80% rule. 80% of different fighting techniques come from the same roots. So instead of trying to learn one technique 100% into it, I like to understand the basis of all of them and then a, a B is acceptable, guys. You start chasing that bell curve, and the amount of effort to get higher than that is more than I usually want to ascend. I like to make styles go. It means maybe I'm not a master in anything precisely, except the simple sword. But it means I, I can make all of it go. So I'll accept that. And you know what? Like I said, I, arrangements could be made. Uh, we're going to talk. Let's see. Sorry, Xander's been popping around and stay strapped or get clapped. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. That is a Nerf blaster, YouTube. This is not a weapon. That is called trigger discipline. Anyhow, uh... It's not even cocked. But while we're talking about fighting, we're going to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts and some of the grittier stuff. People look at the historical manuals and they think in the terms of honor duels. You know, my honor has been slighted, so we'll meet in an organized duel and we will exchange valiant blows like men and Pay homage to insert your local uh, inbred, excessively violent ar aristocracy somewhere. Oh, that was rude. Mm. 
tell you what, put get a couple Galacticinos in me and the world just goes boink. Let me, I'm just checking because my, <laughs> yes, yes, Steve, you know why I'm laughing. They don't, they don't need to, but cutie midnight once again crowing at the most ridiculous time the sun must be setting. Okay. So what I teach is, is a simple aggressive style in that your mentality is aggressive. A defensive fighter lives longer because a defensive fighter is not making mistakes. Hmm? Uh, what's, what, uh, I'm sorry, you expressed dis displeasure. Uh, Ren, you'll have to give me a little bit more feedback. Steve messaged me something silly, and it was just not venue appropriate. I hope that's, yeah, but offense is much more fun. And, you know, when we're, I tell people to understand how to fight with, <laughs> with your body type and mentality. And uh, if there's one thing about Rex, bless his black little heart. Oh, my gosh. This this man who is one of those people who's done just about everything. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Um, I got a message concerning a bayonet that I will not discuss because of the reasons of it. Anyhow, isn't it great? There's just layers. If you look at a fencing manual, you look at the way people are drawn, the body type, the musculature. Rex, Rex is like he stepped off of that and into our world. I'm not entirely sure he isn't a fictional character who just came to life. No one's really going to prove me otherwise. But, yes, he's if you're long, if you're lean, rapid, fast approach. That is great. And in games, always got to think in terms of the conventions. Rex often mentions scoring and right of way. And that is the collegiate way of fighting. It is a safe way of fighting, and it is, you know, a universally accepted means. It is also the epitome of what I believe the safe uh, duel has evolved to. And I'll, I'll say even it evolved the, the peak of, of uh, dualist fighting of men and, and or women coming together to engage in a contest of uh, refinement I would say is foil fencing. I will say that. I do not often participate in that style because I'm not terribly refined. But uh, if you're a large lump, just beat them. Well, see, that's the thing. Your, your fighting style, your take on it, should always match what your body can do. This is why I train a lot with a stick because I walk with a cane sometimes. And I figure I'm not in a wheelchair. If I end up in a wheelchair, you know I'm going to be making an up-armored wheelchair for fighting. And you guys will have to deal with it. Probably two, because I'll probably have a manual one and then an electric one, because that's funny. I love the idea of bringing a tank. Others can be... Exactly. You see, I am a support character. I am not a main character in life. I have people like you, Ren. My, my beloved Contessa to be refined for me. I have people like Steve to be the, I believe the term noble savage comes to mind. Wheelchair jousting. Yes. And I have engaged both wheelchair jousting and uh, wheelchair fencing with people. I have, uh, I've helped people who uh, are blind fence. So as long as you can reasonably grip or in my case, guys, if my hands continue, you know, fail, which eh, there's some neurological damage I'm dealing with, part of the reasons I teach and I don't do as much as I used to, I want either a pistol, I'll either switch to a pistol grip, which will make Al infinitely happy. I'm sorry, Rex. Rex infinitely happy. Or just tape my hand into the sword. 
As long as I can move. Al is fine. Okay, thank you. Because you're, you're spoken of highly in these circles, Al. And I wasn't sure, you know, people go by so many names anymore, I lose track. I don't want to dox anyone. I don't want to accidentally dox anyone. Let's put it that way. Ha -ha. But, yeah, if I lost the ability to grip a weapon, you know, especially with my right hand where most of the damage is, I would just duct tape it to my hand, and you guys would have to deal with it. Exactly. That's what I love. The pistol grip was designed by a guy whose hand was damaged. And I have handled it, and it is a thing of... Uh, It is a thing of precise and engineered beauty. And from the part of me that builds things, I am very much uh, impressed with what's gone into the design of a pistol grip for uh, a foil. And really, guys, you should look into those. Those are amazing. I am, however, also a bit of a historical nut. And a very simple rig, which this is funny because this would drive nuts. He's seen my hands, so there's my thumb. This is a comfortable grip for me. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find something that would be a comfortable grip around here for Steve. His foil would probably be something around this diameter. He'd want to shove an inch and a half, inch and a quarter diameter, uh, you know, dowel in, behind the guard and have to have a bigger guard. Uh, off in the woods. Yes. Um. Have I to, to use a saber, side sword, or a uh, right spurt with a? Oh, off in the woods. That's oh, god. Yes. I'm glad to see you. Yes. Um. I've used them. The thumb rings are interesting. Uh, if because I've this is the closest I have handy for the horizontal. Um, they give they give adequate protection. It's just it's not. Um, or if you're oh god, I got to think which which style thumb ring you mean. But um, ring ring weapons as a whole are really um, they're very light, they're very balanced, and they're surprisingly protective for what they are. I've I've down, I'd love if you ever get back uh, up here from the the wilds of Texas. Uh, we, we should get together. By the way, if you keep contacting, Steve Clawson is actually far closer to you than I am. I won't give anybody's uh, stuff away, but when the travel ban, maybe you guys can meet in the middle and uh, have a bout. I think you might enjoy it. I would pay good money to see you and Rex fight. I had to think about it. I have not used the th the vertical thumb grips. I actually have not fought with those. See, yeah, see if you can get a picture because I may have tried one and my brain is farting. The problem is I've handled too many swords. Uh, too many. But um, I have to think about that. How would I like... See, I've, I've done this with, with the finger loop. I've done a lot with the finger loop where if you... Let me, you know, let me get this guy out. One second. If this cross piece hadn't been installed, but there's like a loop of leather, a lot of the SCA heavy sticks have a, a loop like that for retention. And they work far better than you think. I haven't really done the uh, uh, I haven't really done a vertical. Maybe I should. And I just got to pick a beautiful picture of a pistol grip from uh, Al. Yes, they're beautiful weapons. And see, what's funny is this thing has elements of that. Oh, is that, is that not Al? No, that's, yeah. Let me see. I've got pictures coming in from several people. Yes, I got pic the, the sword that uh, Glenn used. And I, I, I can talk about Kit Ray weapons. Okay. That those are something the pistol grips I've gone to look into, and uh, let me see. Is this not coming up? Why is this not coming up? 
Well, you know, if it's not coming up, I'm going to take that as uh, tech issues. But uh, I do find, and this is why my preference, instead of a very similar, almost identical in length, again, but I prefer having this. And I took notes, actually. When I made this, I took notes off of... Uh, off of Al's uh, pistol grip, because you'll notice the crossbar does not actually perfectly, it's a little off. And it's a little off center because that gives me this, this the, well, yeah, let me put it on camera for you guys. It lets me do some, some very delicate, fine thrust weapons. Okay. Uh, Glynn, yes. Uh, Glynn's sword is a Kit Ray sword of darkness. Uh, I've I've seen it. I actually used to have the poster for that on my wall. It is better than many Kit Ray weapons. I have some some dislikes. If I've handled that very model, and if yours isn't rattly, that's very good. It is more of a, a display model than than a fight one. I have found. Balance is not too bad, I, and I do like a vague leaf blade in uh, in uh, shorter two-handed weapons. I'm kind of kind of like leaf, leaf blades, where it narrows and folds in the filler. But uh, the problem I have with that, and give me just a second, because I realized I'm going to try to do some techno widgety here. <laughs> what? This is the sword he's referring to. I'm going to turn it sideways because it's easier to hold. Now, you know, I finally have picture in picture, folks. My, I do have some minor problems with this, this style of weapon. It's very aesthetic. It's solid, not rattling. And I, that tells me of the care. But always beware of uh, portions of a cross guard that point back at you and of uh, sharp protrusions in a uh, pommel. That, that That's my main beef. As fantasy weapons go, and this is obviously a fantasy weapon, the length's not bad. The uh, the blade shape isn't bad. It's all functional. No, 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 no. Glenn, you're not just distracting me. I would, you know what? We I could do a thing where you guys send me uh, pictures of your weapon and I could swords, guys. I my phone just pinged in my hand, and I know who said what without looking. But um, give me just a second, because boy, do I have a lot going on right now. This, whoop, getting picture in picture the hard way, that's what a pistol grip looks like. So it's very different than maybe what you thought. And it looks like a mutant thorn had relations with a slight curved uh, saber hilt. Saber, uh, yeah, hilt. But that is molded to fit in the crook of your, uh, where the webbing of your thumb is, and it allows you, like, you can just, through very minimal motions, write your name. They're very elegant. And you're not distracting me at all, folks. I put this on to provide information, entertainment, and a bit of solidarity in these times. I I put, you know, I have a source of, I've been working through this book, in part for the people who can't afford it, in part for the people who aren't sure if they want it. I want anybody who wants to be able to learn to sword fight to be able to sword fight. That is one of my passions. And I was involved in a group where certain individuals would go to great lengths to make sure others couldn't. They couldn't learn. Uh, it was gatekeeping on levels I have literally built my adult life in defying. So if you're like, I have the sword. I like it. Is it good for me? I, we can talk about what styles you want to use. You know, we can look into that. I can... Uh, cater, you know, discussions, lessons, the people who give back. Yeah. Yes, it was. <sighs> so I got a little passionate there. 
And are you, yes, actually, I am working on volume two of of the book that will be the strong sword. The original plan was for it to be out in August as part of my birthday. It's one of those things I like. But many of you don't know, I recently got a contract with uh, Boss Comics to design an RPG based around the hybrids comic title. So I've actually been, you know, that's my current job, aside from uh, my delayed going back to the library. And that's, you know, I had the option to sit out a little longer for health reasons and for uh, family sanity. <laughs> so I did. But uh, the Strong Sword is still in the works. And thank you. Uh, I do I do recommend look up look up uh, Starcross Comics. Not because I'm not recommending this because I, I have a contract with them, although it helps. I actually had downloaded the first uh, title in the hybrids as it was a freebie and I got it. I'm like, this is cool. And um, it's neat. I will say this, they are a Christian run company. They have, when you dig in some of the titles, it's very obvious, but it isn't Davy and Goliath. You know what I'm saying? So it's interesting stuff, and it's a chance to, to help a guy who I've come to know and really respect do, you know, live his dream. And honestly, I'm working on a comic book, making an RPG. I, I'm making an RPG for a comic book that, I, you know, I'm getting a little bit of discussion on the creation of. Somewhere my... Uh, my English teachers who told me to stop writing for comics and my art teachers who told me to stop drawing anime and stop working on games. Love you guys. I believe the phrase is hashtag fueled by spite. Let's see. We'll check out after I'm done running. A bit. Okay. Um, that was my friend Eris. He's running a bit late. That's fine. It guys, if you miss this, I post them up for a reason. And I will stay on pretty much as long as it looks like people want to stay on because I enjoy this. I enjoy answering questions. I enjoy helping. So, yes, if you have a weapon, you are, let's set this up. Let's set up a new uh, feature of this program right here now. If you have a weapon you want me to discuss, maybe review. I can't review something I'm not holding. Uh, spite, spite is part of why I'm not in a wheelchair. <laughs> and it has been it is a potentially negative thing I, I hone as a power source in times of, of, of need but uh, that being said if you have a weapon that you want me to discuss seriously pros, cons that I can see through a picture now obviously I would far rather handle weapons in person and I might start do some of that once this all uh, lets loose, I might do a big guild day where everybody brings in weapons and we talk about it. Contessa, I, I'm just going to drink to that and let it go. Like, I wish you the best, and I want to see you. I want to see you spite the world with some of your projects. I have a lot of faith in a lot of people, and I believe you can do things. And you guys should keep an eye out for her. She's going to do some pretty cool stuff. But uh, let me check. I'm getting pings on my messenger over here. And no to the Nigerian prince trying to get me to friend them. But uh, getting back to it, uh, I want to talk about knives a little bit because um, I've had some discussions about my knife not being uh, sufficient. Oh, yes, you you did. That, okay. What? I, before I do this, and I'm going to wait, but he, he needs to share. <sighs> that, oh, thank you. Thank you. And mm, yes, 
Now, uh, the weapon I was sent to review, do you honestly want me to, to review this? Because I will. Uh, oh, Rex, I will actually say my, my piece on it. And I'll give you a hint. It's it's one of my favorite things. You know, for those of us who love trains, uh, it's the kind of thing that you can add a piece to. It goes, choo-choo! Yeah. If you like. Groovy. Pardon my sweat, but here we go. That's what he, he sent me. So what we have here is obviously an AR platform um, by the Magwell. It looks 5.56. Five, uh, I can't guess. Uh, it looks like it's got a flat. Is that a... Okay, it looks like a Surefire or Surefire knockoff. Nice little muscle break, long barrel and... Those actually look like decent iron sights. Oh, BCM. I'm actually familiar with them. Believe it or not, the owner of my house put their stickers all over the place. Mod 1 compensator. Nope, that's Surefire. It is Surefire? Sorry, I couldn't read the logo, so I, I forgot who I was dealing with. Um, This looks like a nice, uh, me by, by the barrel length, I'm going to say, a medium engagement. That, that looks like a solid... I like seeing ARs that aren't running optics. I th I think some people rely too hard on optics, but um, I have I'm working on my ties to the firearms industry a little bit at the time at a time. I do tend I do support. Oh, thank you. That's a much better picture. That is a a, a delightful front grip. Was that a front grip? Yes, it is. Oh, that looks that looks pleasant. Okay, there, there's the other picture he sent me. Ah, well, that explains it. Um, YouTube is not really happy with firearms right now, but they won't demonetize me because they don't monetize me. Um, I know some people who really should set up a firearms channel. I am not, by any measure, an established, acknowledged uh, high-end firearms guy. Uh, so I can make them go and I have absolutely no problem with them because there's this thing called the constitution. Normally I get into two way stuff because, uh, well, why have basically getting closer to topic. Why I carry this is I used to carry a Gerber mini fast draw. It was one of my favorite knives of all time. Cyst open. It's only about that long open. I'm only about that long closed pocket clip. Great knife. But I found out that in some of the places I was regularly going, if I had had it in my pocket, which I will neither confirm nor deny, it would have been a felony if I'd been stopped by the police for something I use literally to whittle. And this is a tool, okay? I'm going to give you a hint. If I'm carrying, if I'm looking for something edged for self defense, it's not going to look like this, at least not primary. This might get me some space to something for something for self-defense. I I will, and I will take the rather political stance, and I'm going to get on my soapbox, I apologize, that there should be absolutely no wiggle room in the constitutional uh, understanding of the carrying of a knife. I'm sorry. I should be able to carry a knife just about anywhere in the country. I understand... I will, you know, courtrooms, I, I, you know, things like that. I will give a measure of wiggle room, but sit, you know, what goes on in New York over knives is offensive. I do not believe it is right or just for somebody to get five to ten years for carrying a knife that can be open one hand. Sorry, I think that's unconstitutional and wrong. It's a little off topic, and I'm going to take that soapbox, put it aside. But uh, thank you for that. Let me see. Um. Uh, now, let's see, that's more on tar target. Let's see, that looks... We, we can talk about this. And if you want to talk about knives, we can... Let me see, can I get this to flip over? I'm having... Technology hates me right now. But I'll put it up for you. That looks nice. That is an out the front. At least it looks like an out the front. Uh, I'm not recognizing the maker, but I should... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I can't read that. 
But I know that the, the uh, I've seen this knife before. I can't remember the maker, but I've seen it. And I do believe, is that an uh, assist open out the front? Stabity. Yes, that's what we're all about. Stabity. Stabity death. Man, that, folks, is pulling from the way back file. It's a stiletto. Oh, it, it's fixed. It's beautiful. I that Oh, that is a fixed blade? Ooh. I thought that was an out the front. Wow, I am out of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's Christmas. That I like things. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm I'm misreading this. You see, my phone will not turn it over, so I can't zoom. It's not fixed. It's out the front. Is it out the front stiletto? Okay, so I'm right. Cool. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, since we're going to bring it up, uh, Ryan, see, it took me a while. But because uh, honest to God, my brain kept screaming Meyer. I have I have uh, Ryan Coker so hardwired into uh, being my Meyer guy that I think of Meyer before I think of his actual name. Uh, especially you're taking most absolutely what what most of these laws where melee weapons are involved in came from needing a reason to arrest people who were probably doing something wrong, whether they were or not. And uh, being able to get something if they weren't. So that's why it's very strange. It's why nunchucks, it's why switchblades. Uh, I love the argument ballast songs are banned or butterfly knives are banned because they're more dangerous to the user than the person, as are uh, throwing stars in some places. Because of all that ninja on ninja crime. And no, that wasn't anything racial, but genuinely classically assassin trained uh, guys in black pajamas as depicted by, by movies and nothing like actual historical representation of ninja running around through like the streets of New York. They may or may not have been turtles. But, uh, sorry, you get a little bit, get, I'll get going on that subject. Because, like, I I am not the gun guy. I have, I have beliefs and, you know, history and stuff. But I leave that to the pros. So a knife, so a knife becomes a dagger when it gains a second edge. That is an interesting question. When is a knife a dagger? Because, hmm, I may have to look into that. Because I've had plunge knives that are obviously not daggers. See, that's where these terms get really interesting. Um, one point of, of, uh, of uh, discussion, and this actually, thank you, Steve. I'm, uh, Hold on. Oh, I needed caffeine to, to recalibrate my brain for a second. The, the defense of individuals and the rights to bear anything to defend yourself, or in this case, basic tool, because I believe everybody, you have a 100% better chance of surviving if you're stranded alongside a road with a knife than if you don't. You it, Literally, carrying this doubles your chance of being able to... to to survive because of what it allows you to do. I think the right to bear arms like this, it should be the whole, oh, you don't have a knife? Here is a knife. You're an adult. You should be carrying one. We'll bill you a buck for a cheap knife. Go get something better. You know, like minimum insurance or something, which is far-fetched, but you see my point. A little bit of hyperbole. But historically, maybe many of you are familiar with Messers. Uh, Messers and obviously I don't have one right now, are German knives, German swords, usually called knives. That's where Messer comes through. <sighs> um, mo okay, sword breaker daggers have a serrated edge. It's just that that serration is big enough to catch the edge of a light dagger. Because um, 
like German hunting swords or hunting knives, have the the saw-like serrations on the back as a survival tool. So, but getting back to the messers, there was a ban on swords, and swords were defined as a chunk of steel with a pommel on the end. So pommel, hilt, steel, you know, rat tail configuration. So what they did, uh, Bert, Burton's Book of the Sword is right over there. I could go grab it, but you don't want me to get up. I mean, let me, I'm going to put a little caveat mentally up on Burton's. But, so the, the people of Germany to get around this ban simply gave knife hilts. So two side panels, no no uh, rear pommel on the side of the tang of the knife and just made it a big knife. Hence, you get things like Kotz bloggers and uh, Messer, knife, grand Messer, long knife, big knife. Usually they put a slight bit of curve and the edge shape in some cases. It had to have that single edge look. Oh no. Now you want to tell me that that's not a sword and anybody else's, that's it's just like today when people quibble about with the ATF over grips. Burton's Book of the Sword is interesting. Uh, I would look at some... Yes. Absolutely. Uh, California and the bands are... They are interesting. What happens when lawmakers write laws... And boy, I, I might catch flack for this. I don't really care. Well, if you if you write laws about something you don't understand, you're going to write bad laws. And I'm still a firm believer that every time somebody writes a new law to ban something, it's a failure on society's part. Um, a firearm is this is a knife. Okay, could this kill somebody? Absolutely, in the right hand, sure. But if I set this down on the table. It's not going to wander off and kill somebody. It would take a person to operate it. Now, would it be irresponsible with my son running around to leave a knife sitting on the table? Absolutely. And there's a measure of responsibility there for that. But don't blame that. Blame the wielder. I also believe that if you criminalize something that criminals are already using, they will continue to use it and be more likely to use it more aggressively because in for a penny, in for a pound, they're already criminals. So, not a popular in some circles, but that's my opinion on that. There is a day goes by where I don't use a knife. I am in lockdown, okay? I, ha I haven't left my house, uh, my property in, gall, nearly two months. I, I'm trying to think if I've actually set foot, like driven anywhere. Well, no, because I've driven around, but I've never got out of my car. I drive down to look at the uh, creek. But still, you get what I'm saying. I'm not going anywhere. I use this knife every day. I use this knife so often that when I go to bed, before I put my uh, scuba mask on, my glasses come off, my knife comes off. When I take my, my mask off, my glasses come on, my neck, come, neck knife comes on. This is literally an appendage at this point. And, you know, if they tell me I can't have this in a certain city, in a certain place, then I don't have much business going there. Because a reasonable tool should not be banned because people who don't understand them are using that as a means of control. So, sorry, I went off on a, on a rant. I hope it didn't offend anyone here. If it did offend someone here, please civilly chime in. And, you know, I will discuss things. I may not agree. I may not even be swayed. But I will discuss reasonably with reasonable people. And we are actually at an hour and a half. So this has been a good live stream. I started a little bit early. So I'm going to keep going a bit. But uh, let me see. Before we get any farther, uh, no offense here. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. And I do mean that. When I say if I've offended people, I will apologize for unintended offense without necessarily changing my opinion. 
That is something reasonable adults should be able to do. I discuss religion, I discuss philosophy with a lot of people that I may greatly disagree with, but there's no reason we can't be civil about that. And that's the only way we're going to fix this country, in my not-so-humble opinion. But, going back real quick to the book. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I want to just point out what happens when you play in your sword, because I mentioned that earlier. And that where I got a ping asking what I meant because apparently their internet got staticky. That's what I mean. Okay? And while I say my book is full of st uh, stick figures, it's easy. But um, I'm starting to... Oh. Double Dagger, actually, I talk about as a second section. If you guys want me to get into Double Dagger as a, as a bit of discussion and possibly even the Golden Fiddler Crab approach, I can. Or I can skip over it and, and briefly go into Cloak. Let me know in the comments what you want for next week because we still have our... Uh, Oh, God. We're just flashed coffee. Oh, well. It was good enough for Jakar. It's good enough for me. And then we're, we'll, we're going to talk... After Cloak, we're going to get into how, how to fight two-handed weapons, which I think people will find interesting. But that's coming down the pipe if I don't have any other commentary. But you guys have been really good about giving me stuff to talk about in these things. And for the folks who wonder what my actual practices look like, because for some of us, they've forgotten... Uh, the Historical Fencing Guild does ha hold practices on Friday nights. I do uh, keep it to only people I know well because I hold it in my home. But, um, or, you know, with, with a, a measure of discussion. But uh, what we do, we usually come, we socialize a bit, we talk, we fight, we, we go over gear, maybe there's repairs, eat. Usually a lot of carbs, because that happens if the weather is obliging, there's fire. And then, you know, you guys get the fights that people want to share. I don't... Very often there are bouts that aren't shared because people are either uncomfortable or they've requested because of job, whatever. But they're, they're all coming around because they realize that seeing people fight of different body types for backgrounds is encouraging to other people. And that's what I want to do. I know I got kind of on this topic, but I want to build people up. That's what the guild is for. That's what most of what I do is about. And I, ho I hope this is at least entertaining and helping you guys. And I, I love it. I'm seeing conversations. I'm getting conversations in the back. And that's cool, too. Uh, I lost track of some things, but we'll... Uh, cool. All right, I have caught up to all your comments. I have caught up, unless the net has dropped me off, which it doesn't seem to be. I've been pretty stably doing good this time. That's really awesome. Um, what 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 would you guys like to talk about? I'm gonna I'm gonna float float the panel to you again. And again, if you have swords you want me to review, send me the picture. I'll just hold it up. It's a it's a crude system. Uh, now there is somebody I want to see. We look, that, folks, is John Miner. I reference to you all the time, John. I am so glad to see you on this forum. Uh, John Miner is amongst, you know, most commonly known as an SCA fighter. He's one of the last bastions of uh, <laughs> a certain measure of roguery left in both the light field and the heavy. And he's somebody I had a pleasure to work with. I learned a lot from him, and I hope I taught him a bit, and we got along a lot. Good good man. But we fight as we are trained and to our own style, learned over the years, and things, things that don't work. Yeah, yeah, John, exactly. What I do and what I do with the simple sword and codified over it, uh, I... I Give people a Rosetta Stone, and then I analyze. Somewhat correct. Uh, I analyze what they do, and I try to put them on a path. And I try to. Uh, I have a knack for seeing things, styles that might not be customarily things people think about, like 
<laughs> I, I I would expect nothing less, John. I would expect nothing less. But that's what we do. And uh, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing because Glenn posted, it's been a while since I've gone into the woods and we have a be beat each other with sticks. I do miss it. Um, that is pretty much the basis of what we do. We just try to do it safely. We build our own gear. John, your everything isn't anything to be expected. I remember I had marshals, and I can say this now because they can't hurt me, come to my home at different points for what I was doing. And one was I was working with John, and we were talking about converting his fighting style to, to fencing. And it's not that I that I taught him to fence. That's a different approach. What we did is we t I helped him figure out how to take what he knew from other disciplines that maybe hadn't been expressed heavily in the SCA, a lot of Eastern things, and uh, express it within the laws, within the rules of the uh, conventions of SCA light fencing. S I'm sorry, SCA heavy fencing, but light fighting. <laughs> Terminology, folks. So, like, I will never forget, he did a draw cut. A, a very much an Iado draw cut. We were out in, the, out in front of my old trailer. And he actually managed to launch me without over-penetration, just the smoothness of the style, into the air with a draw cut on a standard rapier. The fact that the man cannot, you know, can resist the urge to beat people with, with uh, telephone poles while on the fencing field is impressive. And I'm glad you're still out there doing it. I heard he got his calf knot, and that made my week. Um, if there was any justice, you'd probably be a white scarf, my friend. Let's be honest. If there was any justice, you would have had a chain about 20 years ago. And for the folks who don't know what I'm referring to, it's SCA ranking stuff that no longer applies to battered old exiles like myself. But, uh, oops, sorry. Mr. Gomer TV. Heyday, man. Okay, Mr. Gomer, you have a call sign that is something other than what I probably know you as. So please wait in and give me some information so I have some clue who I'm talking to. But welcome to come aboard. We've been chatting about uh, dual wielding rapiers and how to fight it. Minimalist. This is just a survey course going through my book. Oops. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the Big Stompy Robux Core Rulebook. How did that get there? Going through my book, The Simple Sword. With, you know, honest to God, whoop, stick figures. Because I, I believe you should have to learn to speak Italian to learn how to fence. But, uh, so plain English, talking to a 42-year-old man in Colorado just trying to find some stream, good streams. Hey, that is cool, Mr. Gomer. Okay, um, I'm based out of Indiana somewhere. Basically, if you figure out where the rednecks are grown in the cornfields and fed by wind power. Cavendish not promoted to honorable lord and weapons master for white waters. Kick butt. Thank you for the compliment on my stick figures. You know, I am a multi... Okay, whoo. A published artist, done a lot of things. My stick figures in the book are still some of my proudest creations. Uh, Ryan, you're right. That's why I studied Latin. Unfortunately, I lost it to several concussions. I was just sitting... If you, I, uh, I'm in the... Uh, I'm in the uh, middle-ish of the state. I actually grew up up north. So... There are parts of Gary that are quite of the dump-ish variety, but don't let, let the whole state uh, get get uh, painted with that brush. Glenn, ah, yes, the old SCA days. Um, someday I may fully unload on my background. I choose not to because I want to keep this as positive as possible. There are, however, some amazing people in the society still. Oh, hi, Aiden Nodemaster. Nice to see you. 
Um, again, I may or may not know you, but we're talking about fencing. We're talking about swords. And to the people who actually know me through Facebook, if you send me a picture, I'll review your weapon because apparently we're doing that today. And actually, swords guys, keep it keep it clean. Uh, we are going to try to avoid the firearm discussion just to keep me from getting in trouble with YouTube, if that's doable as well. Uh, but, yeah, I what I love is I trade with John, and to people who don't know John, imagine Hagrid if he were guest starring in Braveheart. Can you say justice for Noah against Jan? I I I don't. I hope that's not some kind of reference, but I absolutely despise bullies. And uh, there's no bigger coward or sleazebag than somebody who uses their strength to belittle or injure those weaker than them. So uh, I hope things get better for your, uh, for your son. Uh, be yeah. If there's one thing I'm about... Okay, cool. Thank you. I got to be careful because anytime I'm on YouTube, especially people I don't know, you, you get you get people trying to trick you into getting into trouble. And I really don't want to get in trouble. I do. Uh, hey, um, look, you know what? I don't teach people under 18 as a rule. They're rare exceptions. But I also have a whole bunch of you of uh, videos about how to learn to sword fight that uh, I cannot, as part of YouTube, suggest for children. So I am not suggesting that. It would be reckless for me to do so, so I will not. But good luck, uh, Noah. Seriously, on all things, good luck, pal. No one should be bullied. I was, I made it out. I was really bullied. They like, they kicked my butt all the time. Now I'm an okay fencer. No. You, you, you like that? I try. I, you know, read the transcript. I have said that what I do is for 18 year olds. I don't train people under 18. It's in the writing, folks. The, I have I have worked with people under with parental presence in very special situations, but uh, I I would not recommend it. <laughs> I always accept that, and I hope people understand just a little bit because, yeah, and if not, we'll deal with that ramification too. I'll go broke hiring Rex, but uh, seriously though, guys, stay safe. A lot. I, I actually do need to do my dis disclaimer. My disclaimer is this: if you watch my channel, we engage in martial arts. They are inherently dangerous. We have all been injured doing so. I have been injured over the years, numerous times, and by numerous. These ribs were ripped from, from being attached to my sternum by a rapier shot and an SCA practice. With all approved weapons, I had five ribs pulled from my chest, sternum, three of them cracked. Um, I've had my elbow broken, wrist, hands. Oh, hey, that's good to know. I hope I never need your services, but it is good to know. Uh, broken fingers, broken thumbs. Uh, it was, and I didn't notice. I actually, uh, Run Contessa was there. <laughs> I took the shot because it was a double lunge, which you should laugh at because if we had ran away, that would have never happened. And I just thought I was knocked winded. <laughs> and uh, the so I fought the rest of the night, chatted up Ren, went home. At the time, my mother-in-law had fallen over, and I was helping her uh, use a Hoyer lift, which is a device that lifts people off the ground. 
reached up and nearly passed out. I guess I got real lucky because the ribs had disconnected and were trying to push on like my lung cavity or something, but pop back where they're supposed to. It's why I fence in a, a plastron now. When I talk about my dedication to chatting up my friends, you know, she she should remember that that you know, never feel bad about who you are. You you are distracted enough that uh, with five ribs torn from my sternum, I, I was still being finally so yeah, and appropriately so. Uh, but yes, so. No, no, bullies, and you will get past them. You will outgrow them. And I will tell you, there will always be people who try to bully you, but it gets a lot less physical later on. And what you endure will harden you and make you a stronger, better person. Let me see what we got going on here. Sorry. Boom. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I just got a, a comment that I'm not going... Again, well, the nice thing about it is I have an under-channel of people who message me, essentially. And sometimes they send me pictures related. Sometimes stuff comes through. And sometimes it's stuff that just makes you wince. Nah, you're fine. You're fine, Steve. Uh, there's just a little bit of uh, whoo, association. But, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, wow, we're... We're about 15 minutes out from uh, two hours live. This is this is good. I, a lot of you, I I threw up a much wider blanket, pinging people to remind them that I do this every week, and I will answer questions. I will, to the best of my ability, including the seldom heard phrase, "I don't know." Yes, someone who's willing to say "I don't know" is a rare and beautiful thing. But we need more of that online, too, because there are a bunch of experts who don't know what they're talking about and won't admit it. Um, if you like my style, obviously read my, read my book or any of the other books that are available through uh, Amazon. I have an art page, uh, deviantart.com slash Nick T. You can see my artwork there. I have a second YouTube channel, the Nicholas Tucker Creator Channel, where you can find uh, <sighs> where you can find uh, some of my artwork. I do. Uh, I'm going to be doing more live uh, draw proof. This is the camera holder. It's currently holding the Hello Karambit. I might use this rig as double to hold weapons, so I can parry them as discussion requires. Uh, but we're, wow, we're throwing things again. That's the problem when I have too many hobbies and activities all wrapped up in one workspace. We, uh, I want to thank everybody before anything else happens who's come out. I will be on next week at uh, 8, 7 Central. So 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. Every Friday, while the coronavirus thing is a thing, after which we may switch back to doing pre-pre uh, uh, you know pre-recorded videos of practices, or we may even try to live stream practices. I don't know. That's a little. Uh, it, it, it might be better if there's a little buffering, if you understand, because commentary gets. Fast and colorful during those days. Uh, John, my... John's... John's doing two things. One, he, he's reminding me of a book I wrote in college that I probably, if I were willing to change a whole lot of names and, and brush up, should publish. But Shotgun Great Sword Florentine is his, you know dedicated style. You know, he, he keeps a little ankle piece as a full-size 357. Face-stabbing legal. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Face-stabbing is always legal if it's done properly. And you you know me, I do love a good face-stab between... You know, if you're not trying to kill your friends safely, what's the point of having friends, John? 
You know, and once they start up, you're more than welcome to come down. You know where I am. If you have the right paperwork, I actually have a waiver, and I will be redoing it to basically says, you guys know this is dangerous. If you get hurt, don't sue me. Uh, at this point, Al's twitching with that phrasing, but it's okay. Uh, but yeah, great sword shotgun Florentine that just that that sums up John Minor. I'm serious, guys. You gotta imagine Hagrid on a, on his motorcycle, but with a shotgun instead of a wand and a great sword. That now, mind you, we talk about scale of weapons, and I don't know how early you actually were following John, but I mentioned because my this is my happy little secondary sword. You're familiar with it. 30 inch blade. Whoops. About perfect my scale as a uh, primary sword. Isn't that neat? And uh, it's a little short for thrust based. You know that because I, I rock a 34. But Good to know. I. That's the point, guys. You just saw it. That is a dagger. Now, we'll really annoy John. <laughs> this is nearly a sword on me. It's not fair. There's a video. It's a PSA. I did it years ago with my buddies. I want... There aren't many things in life I want. But someday I want to do a practice, and I want Ryan Coker and Rex Allen Hood to fight, because you two would love fighting each other, and I want to see John Miner and Steve Clawson. Like, I want this to be a doubleheader, because by all that's holy, that would be a good set of bouts. It's a pocket knife. Yeah, it's a pocket knife. No, no, John. Now I'll annoy him. This is a pocket knife, John. Well, this is a neck knife, but I realize it would be about a finger and a half thick for your silly self, but yeah. Why? Oh, um, okay. Al. Ryan, one, you guys should be able to see each other through the Facebook group. Message each other. Two, you're both of similar build. He's a dedicated Meyer fencer. And I believe he's done some strip. You two move similar. You have very similar attitudes, presence. You're both refined. I would like to see you guys fight. I think you would enjoy it. And I think... Um, I, I just, part of what I do is bring people together with weapon styles, and I bring people together with people who fight. Those two would be great. John, oh. <laughs> but does he? He would. He would. He, he was, Ryan's gotten into HEMA about parallel with where you have with Rapier, and he, I would honestly seeing you two do a style off would be pretty impressive. And that's saying something. You came to a, a a modern game in an Armani suit that was nice enough it gave you charisma points. So yes, I would honestly, guys, trust me. If I say you two would have fun together, you two would have fun together. And yes, Ren's right, it would be fun. Uh it did fit your character. Although you rolled an entire zombie campaign, and somewhere, uh, what is it, Mr. Smith? Is it Mr. Smith is following you? No, um, yes. Uh, getting back into Sword Play Glen would have been simpler when I was up north because uh, my, my my wife wanted to to shoot zombies, and you rolled the game. She's mostly forgiven you. I can't get low enough in suit pants. You see, um, I think Al has his tailored with extra lycra for uh, stuff. You guys should chop together eventually. Hey, 
Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, folks, between the lovers, the dreamers, and me. And uh, seriously, I'm not kidding. Um, well, let's see. In the mundane world, Al is a lawyer, and uh, Ryan is an accountant. Honestly, you two could probably take over the world for over uh, some really good scotch and, like, high-end cigars or something in a back room that doesn't exist in a building that's unlabeled. I would love to see it. Well, it would be better is if I could get my old buddy uh, John Perkins for entirely different reasons involved with uh, Rex. But, uh, God, I know people in fields. Well, you know, they say artists travel in... Um, all fields, and Lord knows all levels of society. And you're retired. Glenn, start drilling, okay? Seriously. I don't know what fighting style you prefer currently, but just start drilling. Build yourself up. We will find a way to get you to fight. For those of you who missed it, oh, and they fell down. I'm afraid to give dead space, but I recently purchased uh, two... Size zero, so 30-inch fencing foils. And I'm going to make riggings for them in a classical sense. Hey, may the dice roll in your favor, Ryan. And please, thank you for waiting in. And please kick up. If you guys like what I do, and you'll look through my videos, and you feel it, you know, like you've got the funds, consider becoming patrons. Uh, patrons pretty much get to dictate a lot of what happens on this channel. And they'll get previews, so I appreciate it. Shut up and listen. <laughs> I showed up on the list in leather and steel and stopped the fights on the list due to the bouncing. I remember these days, John. That was such a gear shift out of left field. I think, like, I developed a new brain grape. But, uh... It's okay, I have enough damage, it probably won't be anything. Anyhow, uh, sorry, you just like, oh, John has an ability to open up a time portal in the back of my head because we have history. And every once in a while, it gets, it gets that. And yeah, yeah, you do remember that, that, my Contessa. Okay. Well, I am going on two hours with this lovely show, folks. And that means at some point, my beloved wife is going to need assistance. And I'm going to have to cut it for other reasons. So I will be on next week. And I will try to keep it about this time. Unless there's any other commentary you guys want to cover, I'm going to call it in about two minutes. So. If you want to support me, please like, please share, and please subscribe to this so that you don't miss any of the videos. I've been putting out good content for several years. Look back. Look back. I want you to see the growth of some of the people I've had the pleasure of working with. And if you want to support what I'm doing, understanding that everything comes out of my pocket and I have no overarching group to, uh, to feed stuff, consider becoming a patron. If you like and you want to learn about the, the Simple Sword, which, here we go, it's available on Amazon. It's $4.99 uh, to buy the download. And it's, I honestly can't remember because I put it on sale uh, on hard copy that's just a little bit above uh, print costs. So do that. You know, consider doing that. Thank you, guys. You made my night by coming out. Thank you for mashing the like button and sharing this. And, you know, <laughs> on top of, yeah, you, you do love portals, John. And one of these days, we're going to have you, when, when all this cleared up, you're going to come down and we're going to do an old school gaming day. And it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to get, I'm just going to have a whole weekend event, just like an event where folks can come out and fence and fix things. And it's going to be gorgeous. But, until next week, be good to each other, keep training, keep your guard up, 
And as always, folks, support your local swordmaster.